In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of holy orders, especially myself. I thank you for my priesthood. And uh, um, use me as an instrument today to be able to explain what is the whole purpose of priesthood. Uh, why are there priests? Why are there bishops? Why are there deacons? Why did you make holy orders? And we turn to Our Lady and ask for her powerful intercession as together we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. John Vianney, pray for us. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I, the reason I mention St. John Vianney is he's sort of the uh, poster, poster boy for priesthood. Uh, he's from France. I'm actually, uh, if, we, if this pilgrimage happens in, in uh, September and October, we're going to be able to uh, pray in front of his body, which is incorrupt, in a little town con Ar called Ars. Uh, what's that? Ars. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, incorrupt, you know, basically means that certain saints, when they exhumed their bodies, they were still in fully intact years later, which is a sign that they're in heaven. It's one of the miracles that some of the saints, uh, uh, they went through and, and their bodies are still, in some ways, incorrupt years later. Uh, it's a sign of sanctity. Uh, he was from the 18th century, and um, he didn't do, do too well in seminary school, and uh, they didn't know what to do with him. And so they, the bishop, because of his sanctity, because he was a holy man, even though he didn't seem to be too smart, I think he was much smarter than they made him out to be, he just struggled with Latin, they sent him a little town of ours, and they said, he'll do no harm out there. And uh, when he went to ours, uh, when he first got there, on his first Sunday Mass, there was one person attending Mass in the whole town out of uh, all the inhabitants. Uh, by the time he died in his 70s, years later in that little town of ours, he was hearing 17 hours of confessions every single day, and people flooded from all over the country and sometimes other countries just to have them hear his confession. Um, just a great uh, you know, sort of role model for myself, but it's a great story to read. So why priesthood? Why, why priesthood? And why does the church need priesthood? And there's a, you know, there's a really distinct difference between uh, a Catholic church and a non-Catholic church because in a Catholic church, it, it, there's always a priest. And a lot of times when you go to other churches, there's a pastor. But the distinction of the Catholic church is there's a priesthood. And, um, well, if you look at almost every religion out there, uh, most religions, there is, uh, well, maybe not all, but there is a form of priesthood that they have, right? I mean, even uh, cults have priests, you know? Even demonic cults <laughs> have priests. All right, now what's the purpose of the priesthood? In every religion, it's to make sacrifice. It's to offer the sacrifice towards a deity, towards God. And um, although God is capable of hearing everyone's prayers and people can pray in their own way, it seems suitable that God should have a special class of men set apart, consecrated to his service to worship him alone, to serve God. Right? And uh, in this way, they contend God with a single mindedness without the distractions of the world that would keep the man from focusing on God. Now, there's a practical re reason for priesthood, but then there's, in the Catholic Church, there's a sacramental reason. Because without the priesthood, without the Catholic priesthood, um, there, would be, there would be no sacraments, essentially. There would be no Holy Communion. There would be no confirmation. There would be no reconciliation. There really would be sort of absence of grace. That, that a priest is the sort of bridge between heaven and earth. The word priest, and, and uh, that can be translated from Latin, means, as, uh, comes from the word pontifex, which means the bridge. The bridge between heaven and earth. Right? And uh, St. John Vianney, the priest that I was speaking about, when he arrived at ours, he was, got lost, he was on foot, and this young shepherd boy, said, he was there, and he says, young man, he goes, where's ours? And the little boy says, I'll show you, Father. And he says, show me the way to ours, I'll show you the way to heaven. <laughs> right? And so, essentially, that is our job, is to help save souls, to sanctify souls, uh, to um, govern them, 
and to teach them how to get to heaven, you know. And um, now, I think we need to start a little bit in the Bible. Let's go to the Jewish priesthood because the Catholic priesthood, the Christian priesthood, the priests of New Covenant start in the Old Testament. Now, open your book, your Bibles to Exodus chapter 40, verse 15. Let's take a moment and let you open up your Bibles, the Old Testament, or maybe Google it on your phone. You could probably quicker than looking up in your Bible. And we see in the desert, uh, Moses is told by God, and he says, As you, in Exodus 40, uh, verse 50, As you have anointed their father, anoint them also as my priest. Thus, by being anointed, they shall receive a perpetual priesthood throughout future generations. And so from the, the Levite tribe of the 12 tribes, there was this perpetual priesthood that started in, in the, in the, uh, um, for Israel. And what was the purpose of that priest? It was to make sacrifices, namely to sacrifice what? Animals for the sins of the people. All right, Exodus chapter 40, verse 15. Yeah, 15, okay? And, um, and also in Exodus chapter 19, verse 6, God called the entire Israelites people to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. But he set aside this tribe of Levi as the ministerial priesthood, uh, and because they came from a certain line of people, they were to offer the sacrifices to the God of Israel. Okay, so they were set aside to make sacrifices for the sins of the people. And um, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, specifically number 1541, take a moment and uh, switch over to your Catechism, the White Book, and let's take a look at um, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 1541. And this is um, sort of a uh, part of a prayer, and it says, God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from the beginning, you chose the descendants of Abraham to be your holy nation. You established rulers and priests, and did not leave your sanctuary without ministers to serve you. So, there was supposed to be this perpetual priesthood. Now, um, our Lord Jesus came not to abolish the law, but what? To fulfill it. To fulfill the law. And Jesus Christ did not come to abolish the priesthood, but to fulfill the priesthood. Now, who is the priest? The priest is Jesus Christ. He's the sacrifice, and he's also um, the priest in the same time. And at every Mass, as Father Jack explained in the Mass, that the priest is just, you know, basically Christ is using his body to offer the sacrifice. There's one, so basically the priest is an extension of Jesus Christ. All right, so where did this start in the New Testament? When did Jesus Christ institute the new priesthood? The, uh, well, that was in the Gospel of Luke. All right, in the Gospel of Luke, at the Last Supper, which we celebrate as Christians and Catholics during Holy Week on Holy Thursday, Right On Holy Thursday, what happened is that Jesus instituted the first Eucharist, but also on that holy night, Jesus instituted the holy priesthood. All right. So the question is, at what point did Jesus institute the priesthood at the Last Supper when he instituted the Eucharist? Well, let's turn to Luke chapter 22, verse 19. Take a moment and go to the... Uh, third gospel and go to Luke chapter 22 all right verse 19 and this let's let's read the last supper let's actually read the, that whole paragraph actually okay so this is Luke chapter 22 verses 14 to 20 okay so this is the institution narrative where Jesus instituted the blessed sacrament the Eucharist right review what's the Eucharist say one one word Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ, right? Jesus is body and blood, soul and divinity, right? And it says here in uh, chapter 22, verse 14 to 20, when the hour came, he took his place at table with the apostles. Okay, so what do we have there? The 12 apostles, which will end up being the first bishops. And it goes on to say, he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Uh, he's also speaking to you. He's eagerly desiring for you to go to your first communion on Easter night. 
on, at the vigil. He says, For I tell you, I shall not eat again until there's fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves, for I tell you, from this time on I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broken, and gave and said, This is my body which will be given for you. And then he says what? Do this in memory of me. Now if you circle those words, do this in memory of me, since the beginning of Christianity, we've always believed that was the moment that Jesus instituted and changed those 12 men into priests. Now, uh, we've talked about ecumenical councils. Do you, know, do you have an understanding of what that is? When the church comes together, when there's confusion, and they sort of clarify uh, issues of doctrine that maybe people are misunderstanding or teaching things that are false, Okay, and remember during the time of Protestantism with Lutheran, what, what was the big council that came together to clarify our church's teaching? The Council of Trent, right? That's actually where, you know.